time when a dream left a profound emotional impact on you or someone that you've worked with and how it sort of changed your perspective? Yeah, quite this this one probably more than anything. Uh, like I say, I had been working with lucid dreams for a long, long time. I've had them ever since I was a child. Um, and it was mostly fun. You fly around and, and whatnot and have, have a great time. When I, once I realized there was this wisdom behind the dream, I realized I could turn to it for answers. And the answers were usually literal. Sometimes they were metaphor, but usually literal. Well, this um, my wife uh, started getting to later stages of dementia. And I was getting extraordinarily stressed as what to do. Uh, and um, the, you know, what am I, what do I need to get through this situation? And I went to sleep at that night with that question on my mind. And all of a sudden I realized I was dreaming. And so I decided to turn around and ask the wisdom in the dream. What do I need to get through this situation with my wife? And all of a sudden I was whooshed up into this uh, blue crystalline universe. And uh, there was all the celestial singing going on. And I looked at my arms, I could see right through them. I realized that I was a, one with this entire uh, celestial universe and uh, that, that it was a part of the wisdom. Uh, but then what happened is it got so blissful. It got to be so blissful like I could never even imagine that I forgot who I was and why I was there. And then all of a sudden I shook myself and said, wait a minute, I never got an answer to my question. I said, what do I need to get through this situation? And all of a sudden in this little crystal matrix of the universe, these little red hearts started forming like, kind of like the red heart candies you have these little, they started going around in a circle. And then all of a sudden they formed this giant heart and there was all this celestial music playing. And, but I could hear a tune growing in the background in the midst of this heart, I could hear this tune. And I listened more carefully, and suddenly it was it came up. It was the Beatles singing, All You Need Is Love. And I woke up from that dream. I woke myself up. I said, I have to remember this. And I woke myself up, and the whole dream changed me completely. Uh, and what it's done is through this whole process of dementia with my wife is, is I felt nothing but love. I've never been depressed. I've never been frustrated. Uh, you know, at times you get a little bit frustrated, but it was it was always this dynamic of love that came through as a result of that dream. That's incredible. It it's such I love that it's like a felt sense as well when you 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 could be going through a bit of frustration in the day and then the dream will come back to you and you'll remember the image or the feeling and it just washes everything else away. Yeah. Some oh, people, that's so beautiful. Yeah, I've presented this. I if you want to see it, I could show you. Yeah. I don't know if you Okay, I'll show it to you. I presented it a number of times uh, the image, and people have used it as their screensaver. Yeah, it's kind of delightful. <laughs> but uh, that that was that was the biggest one of the I guess the biggest life change. Well, I've had a lot of life changing ones, but that was probably more spectacular than than anything. Yeah. Are any like, other dreams jumping out at you at the moment that you want to share well, as well? Because I'm here all day to listen to you as long as you is, want. Yeah, there's a couple of <laughs> um, this dream itself and the love, the atmosphere of love that it left with me uh, brought about a number of dreams that I didn't know that could could occur. Um, what happened, there's a theory that as a person goes into dementia or Alzheimer's, that the soul tends to leave the body, you know, and kind of exist on, on both sides. Um, and I'd heard that theory and I thought that was kind of interesting, but what started happening in my lucid dreams is I started being able to meet with my wife on the other side. And they were, they were amazing. They're very lifelike, very electric. You know, when you, when you meet soul to soul, I've had that before with other friends, but um, they, the first one was I um, woke up from a lucid dream. I was laying in bed and as I opened my eyes, there was my wife standing there at the window and 30 years younger, looking at me smiling, and she says, let's go, like her soul was ready to go on an adventure, and she wanted me to go with her, and I thought, wow, that was interesting, and then, you know, maybe about a month later, I had another lucid dream where um, she was uh, 
and now I started I started realizing that these were happening. So in the dreams, I'd be flying around and say, wait a minute, I'm wasting my time. So uh, in, sort of like a little prayer, I would talk, turn to the wisdom and say, take me to Lynn. And in this one, we, I ended up in this room where she was she was packing. And just the intensity of love was incredible. But she was packing a suitcase. And I said, what are you doing? She says, I'm packing for us to go see God. And all of a sudden, I get, wait a minute. <laughs> She's want me to go with her? And then the next one that occurred, these are happening about one month apart. The next one time, we were doing something in the dream together. And it was a lucid dream. And we were having fun. And then I said, well, let's... You know, I was a sense of adventure. I said, let's go see if we can find my mom, because she had died a few years ago. And uh, about that time, my mom comes around the corner, and she looks at me. She says, we're waiting for you. <laughs> I'm going, wait a minute. This is getting serious here. I said, I really can't go right now. And um, so then about a month later, again, the, uh, I realized I was dreaming. I said, take me to Lynn. And uh, here we were in a house, and she was leaving the front door of the house. And I'm going, where, where are you going? She had a suitcase with her. She, I said, where are you going? She says, uh, she says, uh, I'm going to leave on my own. And I said, you can't. You got to mention you can't drive, et cetera. Still thinking about waking life. And she says, no, I think I can go by my own, and I'll do fine. So that was the end of that one. And I, I you know, I was happy for, but it was like. Ooh, <laughs> you know, she's really leaving now. And then, so, then I had another one. And this one, we met in a, it was truly a heavenly-like setting. It was a park-like setting with all these flowers and every, the colors were intensely bright. Um, not much different than people uh, see when they have an out-of-body, or not an out-of-body, a near-death experience, that kind of thing. So and we were in this environment. And we were just having a great time. And the dream went on for a half hour or so. And we sat down at this park bench and started talking. And I looked in her eyes and I started crying. And she says, why are you crying? And I said, well, in my world, you can't talk. Because the former dementia wasn't, doesn't allow her to talk. She, I said, you, you can't talk to me. She said, what do you mean I can't talk to you? I'm talking to you now and we're going to be talking for the next million years. And so we went and played around the park for a while later. And then I then I sat on the bench with her again. And we started talking. And again, I started tearing up. She said, why are you crying again? I said, I told you, in my world, you have dementia. And you can't speak. And I think it was the first time she realized that she wasn't just talking to another spirit. But that wouldn't go with her. Mm. But that, uh, indeed, she was attached to this world of dementia. So then the, about a month later, again, I said, uh, take me to Lynn. And I found her in this, there was this little shop on the corner that just had uh, ceramic birds. And the only word she normally says on her own is bird. So I figured that it had something to do with her, maybe her physical. And she was the manager of the shop, trying to manage the shop. And she was having this terrible time managing the shop. And then, uh, you know, I was trying to comfort her. And then she she finally says, I, I can't do it. I just can't do it. And I said, what can't you do? She says, I can't leave without you. And this was terrifying because then I said, but, but I can't leave right now. And her face just had this most horrid surprise on it. Like, why not? And unfortunately, I woke up then. And then I was panicked. And then I said, I got to make it back to her. And so I had, um, I, I was too, I'm always too lazy to incubate lucid, lucid dreams. I wait till it happen. So this, this time I forced myself for two nights to incubate a dream. And I finally did. And I ended up in this place. It was called a halfway house. And there was just all souls all over the place. I mean, hundreds of people. And this woman was running it. And I said, is Lynn here? And she says, oh, yes, she's just down the hall there. So I walked down the hall, and I immediately recognized her sitting at a couch. And I ran up to her, and I started hugging her and kissing her. And said, I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I can't leave right now. You know, I, I said, but the time goes so much different over there. The time goes much shorter. And, uh, and so I'll be along. 
Uh, but then she turns to me, she says, I'll be okay. I'll be okay. And that was the last dream I had. So <laughs> you ask. <laughs> I'm here fighting back the tears. <laughs> but it's so beautiful. I mean, to have that. I'm good. Holy cow. You know, I didn't believe that could happen, but it did. It's so comforting yeah. to hear about, you know, that you've still got this connection and that you'll, I'm assuming, be together for the next million years, like she said. And even when she does path, you'll still be able to reconnect through your dreams. Is that how you feel? Yeah, that's how I felt. And I mean, at first, because the dreams were very happy, because I think she really thought I was just another spirit. And she couldn't understand why I wasn't going with her. Yeah. But uh, but it was delightful because I couldn't talk to her during the day. But when I'd have these dreams, we'd have wonderful conversations, just yeah. like she always was. So anyway. That was and it <laughs> seems like they've not only helped you, but helped her in a way of understanding and accepting the process and what's going on. And Right, right that transition yeah. period yeah because after that she sort of began to take more control over her body so i think she realized that she still had to deal with that mm. but uh yeah it was i mean it started out delightful and then got very sad yeah yeah so that was quite an experience and it, it, it all links back to that dream about the heart you know yeah and, and I'm sure that these dreams will just continue to keep going and transforming along the journey for both of you. I've had other totally life and career changing dreams, but <laughs> these were the most amazing ones. Although yeah. I had one that, and the one that afterwards it made me suddenly realize that this wasn't all fantasy about yeah, you know, the psychic world. But uh, I don't know if you have time to listen to that. I do. Yep. I'd love to hear it. Yeah. Yeah, this one uh, was, um, I, I, I've i written an awful lot of books and things. <laughs> and I give talks constantly. And I got to, and, and I do it because what I write about and things has, it has to do with them being a vision of mine. I, you don't, you don't get much ego, <laughs> uh, you know, satisfaction out of writing books that, you know, you hardly make any money off of them, but a lot of people, few people read them and stuff. I guess it changes some people's lives, but, you know, so, but these were visions of mine and I had, uh, was in the midst of writing the one called dreams that change our lives with a bunch of the people in IASD, right. And which I was editing and managing. And at the exact same time, I got, um, request to do this huge two volume book by a, a large publisher um, on all the aspects of dreams, a very professional book. And I did, I just about crashed. I said, I cannot do all this stuff, even though that was something I really wanted to do. Uh, and I, I finally, I called the publisher. I said, no, I, I just can't do it. And, um, uh, and then I, it got me to thinking, that uh, what good are all these visions? They just drive me into stress and I don't know that they're really doing any good or not. And I pretty much decided I'm just going to stop all this stuff and give up. And that night, the universe would not allow me to do that. That night, it um, uh, I had this dream where uh, I was introduced by Mary, one of the Mario brothers, actually. It, the dream turned lucid. And so I asked, asked the wisdom behind the dream, show me something I need to know. And I ended up in this big open building uh, with Mar uh, the Mario Brothers as my guide, and showing me the parts of myself that were in conflict, you know, over the, my visions and all the stuff I wanted to do. And he introduced me to this really tall guy that uh, that I looked up. I said, "Who are you?" He says, um, "I'm your fun-loving side. I just want to go out and have fun." Okay. Then he introduced me to another part. And it was an artist, a frustrated artist who was trying to get something done, but all he wanted to do is have it done and didn't want to go through all the work. Okay, so there was another part of myself. Then he introduced me to this mechanical man, this uh, robot-like man. And I said, well, what part are you? What part of me are you? And he says, I am your thinking, thinking side. And he says, I am your past and your future. 
And I said, well, that's interesting. Well, if you're my future, what's going to become of me? He said, uh, I'll let you know after the 13th dream. <laughs> but you can't count your 13 dreams. So anyway, I went and went, went on. And he introduced me to the fourth part. Uh, we were sitting at a bench and this woman, beautiful woman came by. It had all these sparkles around her hair and all. And she was running by and I said, stop, stop. I want to know what part of myself you are. And she says, I can't stop. I got to go do this. Got to do this. I said, so I first I took her and I set her in the chair. And I said, what part of myself are you? She says, I am your visions. I am like diamonds. And so, you know, I woke up from this dream going, okay, I kind of got my answer. <laughs> you know which one you're going <laughs> to listen to. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, you know, uh, and well, these are the four four parts in conflicts. So that was cool, but it was a sort of ask. Yeah, it was a sort of confirmation that my visions were worth, worth something. Uh, so the next day, I we were in the middle of a cyber conference, an IASD cyber conference. And uh, I was one of the presenters there. And I decided I would tell them about this, this uh, mechanical man that says, uh, uh, I, I'll tell you about your future after the 13th dream. Mm -hmm. I said, what, does the, uh, what are the, your ideas on 13? You know, I had done some analysis with it and I couldn't, nothing seemed fit. But one woman said, well, the 13 is the death card in Tarot. And I'm going, the, the death card, am I going to have a heart attack if I keep going? She said, oh, no, no, no. And I knew this anyway. She said, the death card is the, the card of transformation. And it is a positive card. It's a card of transformation. And um, and I said, yeah, I know that, but I don't like picking it if it's upside down and stuff. So so anyway, I so said that night, I said, I, I'm going to go get my tarot deck and see, see what I get. So I, I couldn't find the deck. So then I gave up on the whole thing. But the next morning, I get this email. And this is where it gets weird. Next morning, I get this email from a woman that says, you don't know me, and I don't know you. But I had a dream last night from a Bob Haas on the Body Unconscious Network. And Bob Haas told me that if you pick a card that is that means something neg that it seems to mean something negative, it it really means a transformation or something positive based on the circumstances and where you are. And so here she was telling me this it was an email. Yeah. And she she said, I went after the dream, I went on Google and I found your name. And I saw that you did dream work and or did, wrote books. And she said, um, so uh, I thought you might be interested in this dream. <laughs> and I mean, it made the hair stand up on the back yeah. of my neck. Could this I was going to say, excuse me while I pick my jaw up off the floor. <laughs> and so then I said, "I now I know I got to find my tarot deck. Mm. And so... I go to, I finally find it and I take it and I shuffle it and shuffle it, I shuffle it a whole bunch, you know, and I knew, and then I was going to go to cut it. And I knew which card was going to show up, right? The death card, right? The queen of cups. So I said, you're not supposed to shuffle throw twice, but I did shuffle it again. I cut it, the queen of cups. <laughs> and I'm going, uh oh, there is something going on here. And so I said, I better find the little book that tells me what the Queen of Cups means. And so I got the little book out and I looked in there. It says, the Queen of Cups, the gift of visions. <laughs> so here it's tied right back to this thing. And then, so then I said, well, this is too amazing. This synchronicity is too amazing. My dream is now fiddling with the outside world. So I know I'm going to present this. So I need to find a picture somewhere that looks like this woman in my dream. So I can post it in my uh, presentation bullet file and uh so I, I i went through google and i just i just put in woman with black hair and sparkles around her head you know beautiful woman with black hair and sparkles and about two pages down there she was and the reason i knew it and i wasn't fooling myself as soon as i saw her my heart started pounding the same way it did in the dream 
I'm going, oh my God, it's the same woman that showed up in my dream. And so I clipped it out and I said, uh, well, if I'm going to put this in a presentation, then I really need to find the author's name. And, but there wasn't anything on the image. And I said, well, what if I click on the picture and see what the UR, where the URL takes me? And so I clicked and the URL said, the Tarot Project, the Queen of Cups. Get out of town. <laughs> I mean, about that time, I, I suddenly realized this universe is what everybody says it is, you know? It really does, it really, life extends, you know, into mm -hmm. the spiritual, into the other realms of the universe. There's just no way to get around what just happened. No, yeah, and, there's no denying that at all. I mean, it's, you know, you talked about synchronicity, but have a triple synchronicity all at the same time. That's yeah. just something else. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> it's just undeniable. That's amazing. Wow, what guidance. I know. Wow. So you started lucid dreaming as a child. Was there like a huge, <laughs> profound dream or something that happened to want to get you into dream work professionally? Yeah, there actually was one. And um, uh, but before I forget, I just, you know, a message to the audience. Mm -hmm. that if you can lucid dream or if you find yourself awake in a dream, uh, don't waste your time having fun and flying around. Realize that there's this wisdom there that all you have to do is ask an open-ended question and you'll get an amazing answer. But now what happened to me with, when I was young, a kid, um, I always had dreams that were very vivid and I realized I was dreaming. That was before they even called them lucid dreams. Many a number of my dreams would start out with this. I would be out playing with my friends in the yard, and this massive storm would come up in the sky, and my friends would all run away into their houses, and I couldn't run. It's like your my feet are made of lead, I couldn't run at all, and this storm was coming, and then I'd wake up. And this happened a number of times, enough that it reminded me that it happened in the dream. So one night when it happened, I realized I said, There's that dang storm again you know and I knew it was dream and I said um uh so I so I kind of stared at it and, and all of a sudden instead of this dark cloud it turned into beautiful colors and just a, oh, a total fantasy in the sky and I was thrilled I no longer wanted to run away and uh so then it after any time after that Whenever there was a storm in the sky in my dreams, I would get so excited, you know, and I would try to get it to do things, tear up stuff or turn colors or whatever. And so I was really excited after that. I was able to basically control the storm and make it into a fun thing instead of a, a dangerous thing. So that was that got me intensely interested in dreams when I was a kid. And most of my dream, or not most of them, but a lot of them were lucid because, uh, but I thought a lot everybody's dreams were kind of that way. You know, I knew I was dreaming and I would have fun. Sometimes mm -hmm. if I didn't like the dream, I'd try to wake myself up. And sometimes I'd end up false awakening into another dream. And I'd go, wait a minute, I'm in my living room. I'm not supposed to be here. But, uh, but yeah, that, that just uh, all that experience made me so interested in dreams that it continued until, you know, my livelihood now. Mm -hmm. Did you feel that because of those dream interactions that then in your waking life, you were less likely to run away from a problem or from something scary when it did happen to you? I'm not sure if I was wise enough then to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, true. You're very <laughs> but, young. Uh, but I, I'm sure that that's what was happening. Yeah. The, the, this, this cloud in the sky and stuff, was, uh, whether it was a cloud in the sky or ghosts in the basement, in the dream, when that was ghosts in the basement, I would go, come on out and get me. <laughs> you know, and the dream would go away. <laughs> so I was always playing with the scary stuff. And I think in a way that probably did help me with the scary stuff in waking life. That's so amazing. Thank you for sharing these dreams. I've just, I've been glued to the screen listening like in <laughs> awe. It's amazing. I love hearing this.